24th chapter of Matthew, Christ warns us that um, there will come false prophets. And uh, he says that in the 24th verse of the 24th chapter of Matthew, for there shall arise <coughs> false Christs and false prophets and show great signs and wonders in so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Very elect. Behold, I have told you, therefore, before. Um, you know, if you go into any Walmart uh, across the nation, you'll see three books um, prominently displayed in a very uh, conspicuous place. The first book you'll see is Jerusalem's Countdown by John Hagee. And then you'll see Joe Olstein's um, book. Um, and then you'll also see Rick, Bor- Rick Warren's book, Purpose Driven Life. And each one of these people that are getting tremendous popularity, best selling books, lots of money, are false prophets. <coughs> All three of them deny the Word of God. Joe Olstein says, I don't preach on sin. Um, John Hagee denies election, and Rick Warren's purpose driven life is full of lies and deceit. This morning I'm just going to look at, uh, take one of those books and look at it a little bit more in depth. Rick Warren's A Purpose Driven Life, you know, at least. Recently, at least three different people have expressed to me the great impact that this book has had on their lives. And, you know, um, I knew that uh, this book was so popular and is being used in so many churches uh, to study uh, as a study. And so I I purchased a copy only because I wanted to see what kind of... uh, um, garbage that Rick Warren was putting out. And uh, my original misgif- misgivings of the book are, are not only reinforced, but absolutely substantiated after studying through the book. I, I really believe that this book is a great heretical work and that it undermines the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross and leaves a man-centered works uh, salvation left up to the free will of man to determine his own destiny. And this is a travesty. And uh, this person is going to be set up on a pinnacle uh, for religious truth. But we are warned again by Christ that this would happen. Well, where's the proof in what I'm saying? Well, I'm going to... Uh, I'm not going to go through a 30-page summary of the lies purported in this book but what I am going to do is highlight just a few of the blatant lies that come against the clearly revealed word of God Uh, the first major error which can be easily detected in Rick Warren's book Rick Warren believes that everyone who reads his book uh, that God has designed on them glorious living Now, this is a blatant lie because God does not have designs on everyone for glorious living. Uh, The Bible clearly reveals that there are two kinds of people created by God. One one is vessels of wrath fitted for destruction, and two are vessels of honor. Warren is assuming that all people have potential through their free will to be vessels of honor. On page 18, Warren states, quote, Life is about letting God use you for his purpose, unquote. God does not need anyone to let him do anything. God works all things after the counsel of his own will. The reprobate has no desire to please God. In fact, Scripture tells us there is none righteous, no, not one. Warren states on page 19, quote, 
you could reach all your personal goals, becoming a raving success by the world standard, and still miss the purpose of God for which God created you, end quote. Well, this is another lie. Scripture tells us that for the elect, wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure in which he hath purposed in himself, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling, and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe, according to the working of his mighty power. Ephesians 1, 9, 10, 17, 18, and 19. So, Warren puts all the emphasis on what you can do, And the Bible puts all the emphasis on what Christ has already done. On page 25, Warren states, quote, But he wanted to make you in order to express his love. This is, now, end quote. Now, this is only true for the elect child of God. It certainly is not true for the reprobate. God did not make the reprobate to express his love his love we see the clear distinction given to us in Romans 9 11 through 16 for the children being not yet born neither having done any good or evil that the purpose of God according to election might stand not of works but of him that calls it was said unto her the elder shall serve the younger as is written Jacob have I loved, and Esau have I hated. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? God forbid. For he said to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but God that showeth mercy. Uh, So God did not make all creatures to express his love for all creatures. This is a blatant lie by Warren in his book. God says in the Bible, through Paul, he says, For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, Even for this same purpose have I raised thee up that I might show my power in thee, and that my name might declare throughout all the earth. Therefore hath he mercy on whom he will have mercy, and whom he will he hardeneth. Hath not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor, and another unto dishonor? What if God willing to show his wrath, and to make his power known, endure with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted for destruction? than that he might make known the riches of the glory on the vessels of mercy which he had afore prepared unto glory. So, God works all things after the counsel of his own will, not according to our will. And he didn't create everyone. God did not create everyone in order to express his love on everyone. Now, Warren states on page 33 of his book that, quote, You were put on the earth to be remembered. You were put here to prepare for eternity. End quote. He goes on to state that God wants to pa- God wants us to pass the test. <laughs> okay. Uh, sounds like Roman Catholicism to me. He wants us to pass the test. This is absolute heresy. Christ chose us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us under the adoption of children by Jesus Christ and himself according to the good pleasure of his will. Christ has completed all um, the preparation for our eternity by dying on the cross and rising from the dead for our justification. All of God's elect have passed the test for eternity because of what Christ has done, because God chose them before the foundation of the world. It was God's choice. It wasn't our choice. 
So you were, you know, Warren says you're put on earth to, uh, to pass the test. To pass the test. So in other words, denial of original sin. Man can raise his own self from spiritual life. He can pick himself up by his bootstraps and pass the test. There's only one person that can pass the test, and that's Jesus Christ. He was the only one that was perfect, sinless, harmless from sinners. One goes on in his heretical teaching on page 41 of his book that says, Quote, how you define life determines your destiny, end quote. This is so blatantly absurd. What about those who don't even have the ability to cognitively process information? How are they going to determine their destiny? This is blatant humanism. God determines man's destiny, not man. John 17 states the following, As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. In Acts 13.8 we read, And when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and glorified the word of the Lord. And as many as were ordained to eternal life believed. God did all the work, not man making up his own mind, determining his destiny by defining life a certain way. So when Warren says how, how you define life determines your destiny, makes makes it. You know what that reminds me of? That reminds me of Timothy McVeigh. What did Timothy McVeigh say before they... Um, uh, gave him the electrical uh, chair. He said, I am, I am the master of my own fate. I am the master of my own destiny. And this is basically what Rick Warren's saying. How you define life determines your destiny. Well, you know, Rick Warren should be in the Unity Church. That's basically what they believe, too. They actually believe you choose your own parents. They believe that... Uh, um, so Rick Warren is denying original sin here. He's putting everything in man, man's will to do whatever he wants to do by his own definition. Uh, I heard a gospel song one time and say, it said, quote, I guess it all depends on when you change your mind. Well... On page 58, Warren states, quote, God wants to forgive you, end quote. How does Warren know that God wants to forgive the person who's reading this heretical treatise? The person reading might be an Esau, a vessel of wrath, fitted for destruction. Rick Warren isn't God. He's sure trying to play God in this book. Continue on page 69, Warren really states a myth of all myths. Quote, because, Noah brought pre- because Noah brought pleasure to God, you and I are alive today. This is totally absurd. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord, not because of Noah's righteousness, but because God showed him mercy. Noah was born and conceived in sin just like every other person born on this planet, including Mary. The only person without sin was Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. The only reason that any of us are alive today is God has determined it. In Acts 17.26 we read, And he hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on the face of the earth, and hath determined the time appointed and the bounds of their habitation. But here Warren wants to, again, give Noah the credit for our being alive today. Instead of giving uh, Jesus Christ, who was created all things, credit, he wants to give man credit. Warren states on page 92 of his book, quote, You are as close <coughs> to God as you choose to be, end quote. Well, you know, like just like John Hagee in his book, Countdown to Jerusalem, 
uh, Rick Warren here denies election, denies predestination, denies the covenant, and, and puts all of the uh, relationship with God, puts all of that in the hands of man. God's not the potter over the clay, according to Rick Warren. Man is the potter and God is the clay. This is another absurd premise. Okay, Moses asked to see God's face and was only allowed to view his hinder parts. The apostle says in 1 Corinthians 13:12, For now we see through a glass darkly, but then shall I know even as I am known. It wasn't Paul's choice that brought him close to Christ. He was persecuting the church. But God struck him down on the road to Damascus and told him what he must do. It was God's choice, not Paul's. And so when Rick Warren says you're as close to God as you choose to be, it's absolutely absurd. You're not as close to God as you choose to be. You know... Uh, so then we, so we, what we, what Paul, what uh, Rick Warren has done here, is he's made man's choice the determiner of his destiny. The Bible says it's not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but God that showeth mercy, not of works, lest any man should boast. So Rick Warren is taunting a work salvation. Uh, Rick Warren might as well go ahead and get out his candles and his rosary beads and his uh, graven images and start, you know, uh, worshiping those. He's not worshiping the God of the Bible. Warren states on page 117, quote, You were formed for God's family, end quote. Christ said to the Pharisees, you are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father you will do. Only God has the right to say who are his and who are of their father the devil. Rick Warren is not God, and he does not have the right to tell anyone that they were formed for God's family. Um, going on to page 131, Warren states, quote, We discover our role in life through our relationship with others, end quote. Well, what a poor way to find our role in life that God has for us. We should be looking to God's Word, not our relationship with others to find our role in life. We find in Psalms 119, Thy Word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Warren is more into experiential feeling rather than doctrinal truth. On page 141, he states, quote, Every time you understand and affirm someone's feelings, you build fellowship, end quote. <laughs> Every time you understand and affirm someone's feelings, feelings, you build fellowship, end quote. You know, maybe this is the reason why so many homosexuals are being ordained in the ministry today is because more and more people are understanding their feelings, thereby breeding fellowship with them. On page 155, Warren states, quote, God expects you to make the first move, end quote. This is not biblical. Christ said, You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. God always makes the first move beginning with choosing us before the foundation of the world. How can a dead person, spiritually dead in their trespass and sin, make the first move, I ask? Did Lazarus make the first move? Did uh, Saul of Tarsus make the first move? Well, this is just scratching the surface of the many blatant heretical presuppositions set forth in the purpose-driven life. 
you know, there are many good statements and half-truths throughout the work as well. If I was to suggest to anyone a great response to this work, it would be first the Bible. And when I'm talking about the Bible, I'm talking about the King James Version of the Bible. Not all of the heretical versions out there are taken from the Catholic uh, scrolls like uh, Vaticanus. I'm talking about those that are taking their scriptures from the Textus Receptus of the Bible. Secondly, I would highly recommend a book entitled The Sovereignty of God by Arthur Payne. Next to the Bible itself, this book has had a profound influence on my life. Pink really believed the Bible and taught it without changing changing it to tickle men's ears. Uh, Arthur Pink's book, The Sovereignty of God, might make you angry as it did me the first time I read it, but I found my agreement not with my my argument not with Pink, but with God's Word, because that's the only standard Pink uses in the book. In contradistinction to Rick Warren, who touts a touchy feely <clears throat> universal salvation, but is in direct contradistinction to the Word of God. Father, we thank you for your Word. We know that it will not return to you void. Help us to apply it in our lives. And we realize that we are without hope in the world apart from your saving grace. We pray that you would uh, uh, take this uh, teaching on Rick Warren and help others to use this teaching to show people what a travesty Rick Warren is touting in this book. We ask this in your name and for your glory alone. Amen.